So Missouri is one of a, I think, relatively small number of states that allows public access to the entire state. Any member of the public, I believe it is, can, can set up an account on CaseNet to look at your case, look up information publicly. And as a, in response to that, we had new rules as to redaction requirements and things that attorneys have to deal with. But, but generally speaking, you can follow along on your case on Missouri CaseNet. So that is Missouri's electronic filing system for all legal proceedings in the state of Missouri. Now, it is not bad. It's, you know, it looks a little old, but it is not bad, right? It is much better than what many other states have, especially what in places like Illinois, where everything's different from county to county. But here in Missouri, statewide, every county uses the same electronic filing system. There are, when you first log in, or when you first uh, land on the page, you can go ahead and log in up here. I'm currently logged in under mine. And the options may be slightly different for members of the public versus attorneys, but the gist of it is the same. The main two features that most people will be using at any given time will be litigant name search and the case number search. So this is gonna be the tools that you're gonna to use to actually find your case. Now, if you're at our firm and you're one of our clients, you will, as soon as your case is filed, you'll be given the case number and the link to the court docket automatically via email that you can log in and check on the status of the case in the court docket at any time. But if you need to at some point in the future, we'll check on a different case, or uh, if you're not one of our clients or you just want to look something up, the easiest way to do that would be here on CaseNet from the initial page. So if you're an attorney, you may be more concerned with some of these e-filing buttons, um, filing things, but, but for members of the public, the main thing you're want, gonna wanna look at is the search function. So let's do an example. Let's look myself up and we will look at a case. Oh, here we are, Daniel E. Schnurbush. This is a traffic ticket that I got back in 2010. So you can look up the case. And if you click on the case number, you can actually access the case file, okay? And you'll see there are a bunch of tabs across the top case header. This is just general information about the case. So who's the judge? Where is it assigned? This was in St. Charles County Municipal Court. When was it filed? What kind of case is it? What was the disposition? When did that happen? If there's any fees that need to be paid. One thing I do want you to pay special attention to over here on the right is there are a couple of buttons you can, if there are fees that need to be paid, normally this is going to be something that your attorney deals with. But if you're not being represented or something like that, you can pay fees electronically here. You can access the virtual hearing room or the information to log in. But one of the nice features is you can access the track this case feature. I'll come back to that in a minute. So on the parties and attorneys tab, you can see everybody who's entered on the case. Um, you know, in a probate case, there would be a lot more information. So a bunch of errors and their attorneys, if they have any. Docket entries is every uh, filing that has been entered on the case. So in this particular case, these are not accessible online because this is a county municipal court case, I guess. But in circuit court, in, in probate court, most of the documents that are filed will be clickable and you'll actually be able to see the PDFs that have been filed. Now, the, now there may be documents that you don't have access to, such as certain kinds of secure financial documents and things like that. But generally speaking, you will be able to access a lot of this information, okay? Over here, you can see charges and judgments. So this is more related to uh, criminal stuff, but sometimes you will see judgments get entered over here. Service information, upcoming hearings that are set, civil judgments, garnishments. And Truthfully, I don't really use these, these other tabs very often, but it looks like you can see that sort of information on the case if the county or the judge or their clerk inputs it, okay? So I wanted to circle back here real quick on the case header page, this track this case. So let's say you wanted to know when things are being filed in, in court and you didn't want to have to log in manually every time something was filed. So what you can do is you can hit track this case and it'll say is provided as a service, da, you hit continue and then you type in your email address. And you can also say, I want to receive text message notifications. You can specify what kind of notices that you want to receive and then you click track this case. What that'll do is anytime somebody files anything, just, just like an attorney would if they were entered on the case, you will get emails and text messages whenever that thing is filed notifying you of the filing. So this is very helpful when you're monitoring the status of proceedings, especially if you're like an heir in a case and you are trying to see what's going on or if you are a client and you're just trying to monitor what things your attorney is filing. We try to be very good about communicating this to our clients 
Sometimes that's not necessarily the case with, with, with certain practices. This is how you would do that. So that's the main thing that you need to know as a member of the public about Missouri CaseNet and how to use it, how to access it, and how to track your file. There's lots of other stuff for attorneys and for other people who use this on a regular basis, but that's the gist of what you should know about as a resident of the state of Missouri.